Hello guys, my name is Sebastian Gilbert from Maldivar Films and a few days ago I released my underwater demo reel as well as a comparison with the before after with color grading without color grading. And I received quite a lot of questions and comments about my process of how do I do to color underwater clips. That's what we're gonna look at now. I put my clip down to my timeline and I make sure that I'm in the color workspace with the Lumetri scopes open as well as the Lumetri color tab. If ever it's not the case for you guys, click on window and make sure that Lumetri color and Lumetri scopes are ticked. You can see that my clip is quite desaturated and not very contrasted and this is something that we need to talk about before we start everything. When you shoot with your camera and you know that you will want to color grade your clips, it's important to pick a picture profile that is flat, meaning that the picture is not too saturated or too contrasted, otherwise it becomes quite difficult to actually color grade those clips. So don't pick the standard profile. That being said, the first thing I do when I want to color grade a clip is actually play with the light. Right now, it's too light, I would say. I want to contrast it a bit more. So I can actually push a little bit more the highlight because I still have some space on top here. And then bring the dark down. So I create some kind of a S curve, which is kind of the basic when you start color grading. Not too much because I'm gonna use other tool to alter the light also. That seems right. Then I go to basic color correction. I push a bit more the highlights because I still have a lot of rooms here and then I push the shadow down and push the black down also a little bit and it's already better. Then when I'm okay with the light I go to creative and I'm gonna play a little bit more with the colors and I push the vibrance as well as the saturation so even the colors are a bit more contrasted now. One of the issues when you shoot underwater, especially when you don't have a red filter on your camera, which is the case here, I didn't have a red filter, I'm losing all the red. You can see that the image is very bluish and greenish. So I go back to basic correction and I'm gonna start to push the red a bit more. And for that, I'm gonna boost the temperature towards the orange. See the red is coming up now. One of the issues is that it's pushing the green too. So what I want is to push the purple up. What I'm trying to achieve here is try to get more white part here. When you have the three colors on top of each other, it becomes white. It's a signal for you that the colors are actually right. And you can see it here too. You can see the skin tone are coming back and the blue is better. And then here it's becoming a bit white also. So. It's a space where you want to be. Now I still find it a little bit flat, so maybe what we can do is add a lot on that. So I'm gonna go there and I choose Cine Space. And Cine Space is actually a lot that is by default available inside Adobe Premiere. The problem with this lot is that it's actually very powerful. It has the tendency to contrast your image very strongly. So I want to bring the intensity down back to zero, as if the lot was not applied yet. And now with the control, I'm going back up a little bit, maybe towards 15 to 20. And I think that's about right. See the image is a bit more contrasted. It looks better, looks more realistic, a bit more cinematic also. Now I would like to alter a little bit the blue here. I would like the blue to be a bit darker, but I don't want to impact the other part of the image, like the skin tone or the sand. So where I'm going is HSL secondary. H stands for UA, S for saturation, and L for light or luminosity. I want to change the blue, so I click on the blue and it automatically selects the blue. I click on this one, so it shows me on the screen anything that is colored is something that will be altered once I start playing with the colors. If it's white, it's not going to be touched. Now, it's a good start, but it's not perfect because I have some white here. So I would like to select a bit more. So I'm going to extend the selection of the color of the UA and see already it's so much better. Now I can play maybe a little bit with the light and then remove the dark side of the light. Up. 
Here's good. And maybe let's play a little bit with saturation. Here it's not saturated, here it's saturated. So if I remove the non-saturated part, I start removing the sand, which is a good start. Okay, I think we're not too bad now. I can click off, click on, all right. I'm gonna push a bit the blurriness of the selection so the pixels are not too sharp and when I will apply the effect is not gonna be too obvious. Okay. So I said that I want my blue to be a bit darker. This bar here, if I go down, it becomes darker. If I go up, it's lighter. So let's bring it down a notch. And not too bad here. We are done with the first step and already the difference is very strong. It's so much better now, as you can see. Before, after. But we can do even better and I'm gonna show you how you can use adjustments layers to pinpoint just the skin tone or just the light or just the dark even further. I go back to my project and I pick an adjustment layer. If you don't know how to use it, click here, click on adjustments layer and then click OK. This one will appear inside your project. Bring it down to your timeline on top of your clip. And I would like to try to remove a little bit of this light bluish color that we have in the middle of the frame. Try to turn it as the sand, so the contrast between the water and the sand is even stronger. So I click on the light blue, click here so I have a better view of what I'm doing and I start moving a little bit and try to select with the same process as earlier with dark blue. Okay, I think it's a good start already. I need to be careful here because here it's selected also, so it will have an impact. So I want that to be a bit less saturated, so it's closer to the color of the sand that we have around here. So I push down the saturation and maybe I can push up a little bit the orange so it looks a bit more like the sand that we already have. All right, not bad. Now we'll start one of the most important part which is actually getting your skin tone right. I would like the skin of the free diver to be a little bit lighter and a bit orange maybe, a bit more contrasted. So for that, I'm gonna bring one more adjustment layer on top of my clip. Stay with the HSL secondary and click on the yellow orange button. Click on this one and I'm trying now to select all the skin. I'm getting the skin, but one of the issues that I have is that I'm also getting the sand. So let's try to remove anything that is too light and only keep the dark side. So I can go down here, I'm removing the light, going down, I need to be careful because I might start losing the skin sometimes. See, if I go too down, the skin starts disappearing too, so I don't want to do that either. It's not perfect because as you can see, the sand is selected and not just the skin, but I will show you a way later on to actually remove this sand too. Now we're just gonna focus on the skin. So the skin is a little bit too dark for my own taste, so I'm gonna push a little bit so it's whiter. Not too much though, okay. When you push it to be a bit lighter, it's nice also to push a little bit the contrast. Okay, now we're gonna play with the colors. So I'm gonna push this one towards the red and the orange. And you can see already how it changes. I can also use this one. And it's probably a little bit too orange now. So what I can do is also bring the saturation down. Bring the light a bit up, saturation a bit up. And I start having a result that I like now. But the issue is, I have all this sand that is being selected. So what we're gonna try to do is create a mask dedicated to the colors and try to remove it. As you can see, I'm drawing the line around the free diver. And if I check where the mask is being applied, it's only here. The sand is not affected anymore. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna click on this one, remove this, go back to the mask. I created a keyframe and I will go back to the beginning 
it takes a little bit too much of the sand here so I'm gonna bring this one up make sure that the free diver stay inside the mask okay let's look at the clip again see so much better than before already now we might consider that the job is already done but I would like to take it a little bit further by adding some drama to the scene by using a lot on top of everything I go back to the project I add the adjustment layer I go to the creative side and this time I'm gonna add a black and white LUT mine is called Casino Royale which is not by default inside Premiere but you have many black and white LUT by default inside Premiere that you can use and that would work perfectly fine also now I end up with a black and white clip I don't want that so I bring the intensity back to zero as if the LUT was not applied and I slightly go back up until the result is what I'm looking for and I think that's not too bad now see if I remove the LUT before, after, before, after I think it looks a bit more cinematic now now the job is done but if you want to do things really well there is one more thing that you can add when you start playing with colors with Adobe Premiere what happens is usually it adds noise the image quality is kind of kind of deteriorate a little bit so it could be useful to add a feature that's called a denoiser something that kind of reduce the noise that you have this is usually a plugin that you have to buy online this is what I have from Magic Bullet and it's called Denoiser I go to my effect Denoiser already selected here and I add it to my last layer where I don't have the mask it takes everything I go to the effect control and because the amount of colors that I added is very heavy Maybe I can push it to 25 here to reduce the noise and then sharpen the image a little bit more up to 25 also. And now let's render. That's it for my process of color grading underwater clips. I hope that you've been able to learn one thing or two. If you have any question, don't hesitate to ask me inside the comments. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't done it yet. And thank you for watching. See you next time.